appreciate that. Welcome. I appreciate you guys being here. Um, this is my first time trying to speak in front of a live audience that I can't see. And it's kind of difficult because I normally work on the feedback of my audience. Well, I was asked to um, speak about something that has happened to me just recently, this past year. And the trials and tribulations that I have had because of health issues. There's a lot of us that think that we're iron, we're going to last forever, and nothing will ever stop us. I was planning to, to retire as a boat captain at the age of 75. And when I say boat captain, I run what's known as limited tonnage boats. Um, my last boat was 280 foot long, and I was working out in the Gulf of Mexico in the oil field. And things change as we get older. And as I go along through my, my, my presentation, you'll understand. But let's start at the beginning. We could have done anything as a career, but we find ourselves here in our seats, watching a, a program like what I'm presenting. For some reason, we choose the path that let us here. And if you put a child in an Olympic sized swimming pool and you say, this is you and the water around you is the information you need. As we start the, our careers, we're surrounded with a wealth of information. And at times we have seemed overwhelming because as we learn and if we break it down in boat terminology. We have system upon system upon system that we have to learn. So as we learn, we grow. And as we grow, we learn even more. Because as we learn, we understand what we didn't know before. When we become proficient in our education, we hit our stride. I'm using these water examples as a progression, progression of life. And as we grow older, we offer our knowledge to those that will eventually take our place. You know, Mike just said that we're trying to get, or we would like to get younger people, younger blood into the organizations for one simple reason. We're gonna go away one day. We don't know how, what our expiration date is. And as the years pass, our rappers get older. Our minds will stay sharp through education and exercise. As part of our mind's need for information, this continued education that we do online, in person, what have you, keeps us sharp because we want to know more. At least I do. I'm hoping that everybody else who's listening to this does the same thing. Because without the education, we're going to be overwhelmed and we're going to drown just by the technology that we don't know about. And as you know, our technology changes day by day by day. If you go five days without something new happening, you've missed it. Even with proper planning of our lives, we're sometimes thrown a little curveball that we weren't expecting. And we end up here. Makes you think about your, your life and your life goal. It's like, I wasn't planning to be here. Because ill health is only a missed heartbeat away and can strike at any age. But with proper planning, this is not the end. Now for my story. As I said before, I'm a mariner. I ran commercial boats for a living. And I worked for 28 days on. And I worked 14, er, and I was had vacation for 14 days right after that. So every six weeks, I was on vacation. It was awesome. In 2017, no, this isn't my house, but it just gives you an idea of 
what's going on in my thoughts. But in 2017, I had open heart surgery. And as I was recovering, I was watching the news and in two news stories back to back. The first one was a hurricane hit Texas, stalled for three days and everybody's house flooded. There's no place for the water to go. Next news story, California is burning. That's nothing new, but it was huge. And I sat down and I looked around at everything that I owned. I was like, if I had to evacuate, what would I take? What would I do? What do I need? I made a decision. I didn't need much more than my girlfriend, my dog, grandkids. Pack them in the vehicle and go. Everything else I can replace or wouldn't need to replace. So in 2018, I sold my house. I was looking for something different. I was looking for home, some place that I felt like when I was a kid. Because like many of us, I would go out and, and I would live in areas that I was working. It wasn't I wanted to live there. It was I had to live there because that's where work was. So I sold my house. I bought a truck, bought an RV. I wanted to see the United States. I was looking for home. My doctor said, no. You can't leave. You're sick. So on April 21st, 2020, I could no longer run boats formally. I was formally declared disabled at 59 years old. 59, when you get there, it is not that old. And it seems like every birthday, it's like, well, this isn't very old. And I know you guys are thinking the same thing. I can no longer work the water. This is something I really, really loved. Here's where life planning falls into play. I knew I was sick for two years before I was declared disabled, but I didn't want to face the fact that something was wrong with me. Even, through, even though I was in denial, I had started to make plans to survive because life goes on, even when you're ill. With the support and encouragement from a longtime friend, I started planning my future as Marine Surveyor. This friend was a person who trained me as a surveyor many years ago, even before I knew what a Marine surveyor was. And let me explain that a little bit. And Randy, I'm talking about you. I met Randy in 1979 or 80, somewhere around there. So we've been friends a couple of years. And every time we got together, this man would teach me something. He would identify something and expand on it. It was incredible. It was like having a walking encyclopedia, an interactive walking encyclopedia. And in the 70s and 80s, that was not heard of. So I decided to go ahead and get back into surveying. So after much expense and thousands of miles and travel, I joined the IIM, IIMS. The dues aren't expensive, but the air travel to the UK, hotel room, meet and greet the membership committee to show my interest and conviction in the membership to the organization. It's a little pricey. Personally, I felt it was a good investment. The reason why I had to do that is because of my limited surveying, according to the IIMS. The people I met are awesome. Cam, it was wonderful meeting you. And I look forward to next year when we can meet again face to face. And I joined two other organizations, American Boat and Yacht Council, the PYC, and Society of Accredited Marine Surveyor, Surveyors. It took me over a year and a half to get into SAMS. But again, it was worth the wait. Again, the people that I have met because of SAMS, because of the 
organization has helped me with what I am trying to do. I have been declared unfit to work another job, not mentally, which most people are expected, but physically. And I had to do something different, something I hope that nobody else here has to face. So last year, I started to take two, I started to take class with ABYC to meet Sam's requirements for education standards. It's kind of hard to complete something when the side effect of what you have is a lack of concentration and oh yeah, I wasn't told this, internal bleeding. I only found that out when I fell off the commode and found myself on the bathroom floor. Not a pretty sight or at least that's what I've been told. But seriously, I passed out because I had lack of blood in my system. When I was taken to the hospital, my hemoglobin was 4.3. The doctor said most people pass out at the hemoglobin level at five. Most adults are around 13. That shows you how bad I was bleeding. And what the internal bleeding was, was a perforated ulcer. I did not know about this for quite some time, or at least until I almost bled out. So if you can't laugh at yourself, you can't laugh at others. Luck for me, I had short-term disability with the company I was working with. I also had enough foresight to take the long-term disability as well. If you have that opportunity, take it. It may cost a couple of dollars a month out of your paycheck, big deal. My FLMA or Family Medical Leave Act allowed for a 90 days of leave from work. But after the 90 days, I was terminated from employment. It's a lonely feeling you get when you're terminated, when your termination papers arrive and you're sitting there and you have this illness and you feel just basically all alone, like you're standing in the rain with no direction. It's the people around you that help you go on. And Randy, those calls you made to me meant the world and made my life more palatable. And I'm forever in your debt. Thank you. How could I plan better for my future? Money, 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 money. Money is not always the object that we make it out to be because when you have some, you want more. When you don't have any, some would be better than not at all. We're never happy with money. But the old adage was put money away for a rainy day, put money away for a rainy day. I did, then I have which makes it a little bit easier. Here's where life planning can make a bad situation better after the shock wears off. And when you're told you can't do something, and I'm quite sure many of you people that are listening say, if someone tells me I can't do something, you'd like to prove them wrong because I'm the same way. And what I have has kicked my butt. Because sometimes when I do something, I will go three, four days, and I have all the energy in the world. And the next day after that, I have zero, and I can't even get out of bed. If you don't have insurance, get some. Get some health insurance. It's affordable. Because otherwise, my little stay in the hospital was $81,000. I had already met my annual deductible of $5,000. So I didn't have to pay anything out of pocket. It's like, hallelujah. But this happened in June, and I had already paid $5,000 out of pocket. As we get older, we don't get better. <laughs> we have a tendency of getting sicker. 
And if you need to get supplemental insurance for your primary insurance, because that will help relieve the amount of out of pocket that you have to pay. Yes, I know being insured costs money, but the loss of everything you've worked for and owned because of an accident or illness is worse. Remember, there's always Aflac. It may sound funny and they have great commercials, but what it is, it's planning for your future. Because if you don't have that, you have nothing else to fall back on. Now, what they don't tell you about long-term disability is if you are declared disabled. And here in the United States, we have something called social security disability. And if you're declared dis disabled through social security, all the monies that you have received from the insurance company, you owe them. Because Social Security will pay from the day that you get sick. Now, in my case, my Social Security payment is far less than what I'm receiving on a month to month basis. So, if Social Security does kick in for me, I'm not sure how I'm going to pay that back. And that vehicle that I bought and my house that I live in, which is my RV, I'm not sure how I'm going to keep that. Now, an outcome for us was totally different than just about anybody else in the world because the demand for boats were high and hopefully everybody reaped the rewards. But if not, get income interruption insurance or at least look into it. I know you guys out there, you expense everything out which is great, you should be, because you should be paying as little bit of taxes as possible, utilizing the appropriate laws. Two years ago, who would have figured this pandemic was gonna hit us? If you were insured, you could have collected for the lost wages of 2020, just because of regulated lockdowns. Planning for the future for your business begins now. It continues every day until you close your doors. <clears throat> Being able to provide for yourself and the needs of your family must be the forefront of your business con conversation and should be implemented in writing. So a defined path can be followed during lean times. There will be lean times when business is slow. Will you be able to survive months without an income? Planning, planning. Everything in our lives is planning. For most of us, or most of you attending the seminar, you won't be 43 years old when you have your first heart attack like me. Yeah, I was only 43 years old. My dad died at 53. I never thought I could see the end of 50 but you could be younger to have the same heart attack. It seems as I grow older, I can see perfectly into the past to identify errors in my ways, but I still have difficulties in my future. To keep the correct path takes planning and the ability to deviate from the past to avoid unforeseen obstacles. And that those obstacles are the lack of funds, ill health, an accident, you need to plan, even for these contingencies, because if you don't, you're gonna be standing out in the rain going, my God, what do I do next? In my summation of this, I hope I've gotten at least one or two people to understand the importance. Now to answer your question right off the bat, what's, what's wrong with me? I have a stage five kidney failure. And in saying that, I need a new kidney. I've been waiting for Mayo Clinic. This is how fast they work. I've been waiting for Mayo Clinic to respond to a letter that was sent out two months ago, just to be put onto a waiting list that will last, average time is five years to wait for a kidney. I'm not on dialysis yet. 
and there are ways to keep me alive. But think about it. Do you really want to be hooked up to a machine just to live? Anyway, to my colleagues, thank you for listening. Again, I hope I've touched somebody in a manner in which will help you. Thank you.